guess you, you were not thinking I was going to start a chase from here, but I am. I am uh, standing in front of the Frontier counter, going to catch that flight to Atlanta, Georgia at 12.30, so midnight 30 on this. I'm not even sure where to begin, to be honest with you, but uh, I'm at the airport, uh, going to catch a flight, land at 5.30 in the morning Eastern time. I have a vehicle waiting for me and I will be heading to Birmingham, Alabama initially. So with that, I will get back to you probably on the plane just for shits and giggles. Then I'm going to take a three hour nap on the way there to get up in the morning and begin a very lengthy day. So from Denver International Airport on my way to Atlanta, see you in a bit. Uh, I'm on the plane, we're just about ready to take off, waiting on the a ventilation fan to be fixed and we'll be on the in the air. It is uh, 1226 on the Weather Channel on all three TVs. I am now equipped to chase, but none of this has any bearing around the way. And uh, we'll be leaving Denver here momentarily, or at least getting airborne on this flight that has a total of 41 people, leaving me the whole row see to myself where I will catch a two-hour nap and uh, get up and get ready for tomorrow. I'll do a quick swing of the plane. The emptiness and everything oh, it is great. So that's where we sit right now. I'll update again from Atlanta in a few hours. All right, time, 6.55 Eastern Standard Time. We are uh, just outside of Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying that. But yes, it's uh, about seven o'clock. I have gotten out of here about a half hour earlier than I had planned, which is good. Put me in Birmingham about 8.30, I'm thinking. As you can see, I've got uh, my laptop and the driver in the passenger seat next to me. With GPS and GR level 3 spotter network active. I am waiting for someone who doesn't know I'm out here to look at that and go, what the bleep? So, McLean on the dash, and the sun has not come up yet. Alright, time is 7.51. Uh, we switch into, there we go, central time zone. So it is now 8.51 central time. And I'm going to get behind this semi so I can actually make use of this. But we are about to cross into the wonderful state of intoxication now. Alabama. How about that? Tornado. Tornado. Oh my God, look. funnel
You can't do anything, we're legal. This will be the second one she's dropped. Yeah. Really? Yeah, we've been following it. There it is. Oh. There it goes, there it goes. There it goes, there it goes. Oh, baby, come on. Yeah. Uh, well, we're we're waiting for the big one to pass to our south. We're we're at a gas station that just lost power. Yeah, it's it's crazy, and we got another tornadic supercell heading this way. So keep your eyes open, baby. Look. For many communities, the devastation is immense, and for survivors, it is a moment forever etched in their memory. It's one of the scariest things I've ever been through. A wintertime tornado outbreak, striking community after community in the southeast. Our own Tony Laubach, our producer here at 7 News, and a storm chaser was out on the storms near Memphis, Tennessee. That's the wall cloud. Denver 7 storm chaser and weather producer Tony Laubach was there with a purpose. There go, there go. Storm chasing uh, is important because it, it has eyes in the field. We were able to, to get, help the weather service issue warnings and warn these people that these tornadoes were coming. Danielle Lenieski is a survivor of last night's storm. A major tornado passed just beyond her home. You're just looking at this thing and it's just monstrous and you can see all, you could see the debris in it and everything. It was it was amazing but it was beyond scary at the same time. The howling winds struck and destroyed a department store just a mile from her home. It was really scary to be in an enclosed area and not know what's going on because you don't have lights. I didn't have television and, you know, my radio wasn't working, so I couldn't really hear anything. In terms of your own life experiences, uh -huh. how does this experience rate? How does it rate? Oh, my gosh. A 10, but I hope I never do it again. <laughs> Richard. And Mike, the uh, Holly tornado was an EF3. This is a picture of the damage that we saw with that department store just a mile from Danielle's house. This is called an EF2, and you can see the damage that was there. When you took a look at the uh, Doppler radar, you were on the phone with Robin, uh, one of our executive producers, talking Danielle through this storm as the squall line moved through. And this was the actual echo that we were looking at at the moment. Now, I'm going to just draw one thing on here. There's a little notch. You can kind of see this little right in here. 
And that location right there, that little notch right there, is what we look for in that type of a storm front. And that is a sign, as you can actually think of the tornado kind of turning that whole squall line around with the rotation. Uh